Welcome back to Real Pastors Reviews. This is our spoiler edition of Spider-Man No Way Home. You heard it right. Spoiler alert. We are about to spoil this movie. So if you have not seen Spider-Man No Way Home, click away now. You have been warned. Go see it. And most importantly, come back. Or if you're one of those people that don't care about spoilers, one, what's wrong with you? Stick around and watch it, I guess. Um, but yeah, we're ready for our non our sorry, our spoiler review for Spider Man No Way Home. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about. So, Efren, come on in and join us as we finally get to talk about this movie. And oh, yeah, wow, I know so much. Again, listen, we are giving you all the chances. Spoilers, look right there. Spoilers, mm -hmm. we are going to spoil the crap out of this movie. Check out our other video, the non-spoiler review. Um, I will put up, I will put up here somewhere, mm -hmm. the little yeah. tag thing to that video. If you want to get out now, you know the yeah. little, so you can go to that video, see our non-spoiler review, see our thoughts, see our ranking, and then after you see the movie, come back here mm -hmm. to check this out. But yeah, there's so much to talk about, Gary. Um, Effort, my friend. This the the early 2000s heavy metal band Power Man 5000 said it best. This is what it's like when worlds collide, mm -hmm. and worlds collided right last night. We yes. had three Spider Man on screen. Yes, spoilers by the way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know it. <laughs> yeah, it happened. They've been denying it. Oh they yeah. It off. It was the worst slash, the worst slash best kept secret. Yeah. Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire himself joined forces with Tom Holland. Yes. Um, in and, a beautiful way. In a beautiful. In a beautiful way. Yeah. way. And being in that theater when those guys show up and people clapped and got excited, that was cool. cheering. Yeah, yeah, cool. yep, cheering. That yep. was cool. So, and and it's just like, and we're, let's just go ahead and get all this out of the way so we can uh -huh. just talk. They're not the only ones who showed up. Like we know the villain showed up. You saw it. You saw them two showed up in this thing. Mm -hmm. Also, Charlie Cox, Daredevil. Yep. Yes, showed up in this movie. Uh -huh. He is officially yep. in the MCU. If you've seen, listen. If you haven't watched Hawkeye, yeah, because there's stuff in there, and I don't want to yeah, spoil yeah. that. But Daredevil is officially in the MCU. Before oh, that when brought me so much joy. I know when, when those Netflix series came out, especially Daredevil, it was the best one. They mm -hmm. were oh, they were they, they were semi connected, mm -hmm. kind of like Agents of Shield. They were semi connected, but not really. He's officially in He's this there. thing, and, and let me tell you, I was excited to see him. The only thing I kind of have a gripe about is like he was there. It was like it was like he was only there. This is part of like, if you see the other review, I said I have some nitpicks and stuff, and mm -hmm. I couldn't say this one. This is what this is one of my bad things that kind of helped me with mm -hmm. my ranking. Was mm -hmm. I felt like he literally was only there just to say he's in the MCU. Oh, he no, didn't no, really have a no, reason, yeah. and that's why I was yeah. like, oh, like you could have done more with that. Well, but no, I, I get what you did, you know. But I, I liked it. I still liked it. With you, sir. I, uh -huh. I do. It, 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 if I may. Um, leading up to his scene, what was said over and over again, because uh, Peter Parker, Ned, and MJ, and um, Aunt May, they get their being investigated for what happened to Mysterio, and over and over again, they say, we need a, I'm going to talk to, I need a lawyer. I need a lawyer. And they keep saying, I'm not saying anything until I get a lawyer. And then, I, and then they pan over to the next scene, and... They have their lawyer, Charlie Cox, <laughs> Daredevil yeah. himself. So I thought that was a good way to usher him in. Yes, it was just to say, by the way, he's here. He's in this in, in this universe, just so we're clear. But I thought the, because they needed a lawyer. And you know what? The MCU, the city of New York has a lawyer, and his name is Char Charlie Cox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I and like I said, like, I liked it. But it was yeah. just kind of like the parts where he was just saying like, hey, like you guys need to get your lawyer. It was almost like I am Spider-Man's yeah. lawyer and that's it. But what yeah. was beautiful about it, I mean, this happens yeah. in the – like this happens in the comics, <laughs> right? Like like Daredevil represents Spider-Man. Like this actually – like this yeah. isn't something they just made up for the MCU. Like this oh, right has okay. – yeah, this has history. So that's why like I really liked it and that's yeah. why I guess I wanted a little bit more because – there, obviously, there's more story there, and I wanted them to set it up a little better. Mm -hmm. But like with the way this movie ended, which we'll get to in a minute, I guess yeah. it kind of made sense that they didn't do too much with it. But mm -hmm. I'm kind of wondering. And they did have that awesome moment where someone threw a brick through yeah. the window, and he's like, Whoosh! and he catches yeah. the brick before Spider-Man could catch it. And I he was like, that. whoa. Yeah, that's a, I thought that was really cool, too. Yeah. 
yeah that was that was a cool scene and he's like how'd you do that you know um yeah that was that was a cool way to bring it in and then the villains were brought in we knew that was coming and then you just kind of you know at some point it's going to happen we're gonna see the spider verse Mm -hmm. you know and it's building up and it's building up and what were your thoughts on uh when andrew garfield showed up on the scene And, and let me ask you this did this movie, and we'll start with him, did it make you appreciate him more after seeing mm-hmm. this? Yeah, I think for me, um, like when he sh- when he showed up on screen, because he was the first one who showed up, which it was kind of like you could tell, like we have this, we got to bring in Garfield, and it's like Tobey Maguire, like that's the one that like we're going to build up to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, rightfully so. Yeah, and rightfully so. And uh, when he came on screen, like it was funny because like once they first showed him, he's kind of in a dark alley, like kind of back. Yeah. But just because of the way his eyes were, I'm like, that's Garfield because I yeah. know the costume, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and so I was just like, yes, like I was, okay, he's in. Like I was excited because there, even though it was like the best worst kept secret, you know, mm-hmm. um, it was. I still kind of had doubts that they were actually going to bring him in, mm-hmm. uh, bring either one of them in. And so when I saw him, I was like, yes, okay, they're doing it. And it like, and I'll be honest with you, when he showed up on screen, it was almost surreal. I yeah. almost felt like, I almost felt like, am I really, is this really happening? Like, it, like it was almost like hard to believe. Um, and I was like, I can't believe they're actually doing it. Like I was just kind of, and so I was excited because honestly, like the first Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield, I thought it was, I thought it was fine. Like mm-hmm. I didn't think it was great or whatever. I really, I and I know a lot of people disagree with me. A lot of people hate the second one. I like the second one a lot more than others. I, I still have my gripes, but I liked mm-hmm. it a lot more than others. Um, and so being able to see him, especially because he didn't get his third movie, yeah. it was like being able to see him. I do feel that there's more appreciation for him in this role. Yeah. Um, you know, he's still he's still like kind of too cool to be Peter Parker. He is. Uh, yeah. He kind of is. And you kind of yeah. see that in this movie. It's almost like they played into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, but I but I thought it was great and I and I really liked that and then even with Tobey Maguire when he showed up, uh, you know, not in spider costume, you know, just <laughs> dressed up, um, you know, normal streetwear, yeah. and then he, um, you know, and then and he shows up, he actually looks older, you know, yeah. you can tell like like real time has passed for him, mm-hmm. and which I really really liked. I liked I that too. it was like for him and for um, for him and Garfield like real time has passed. Mm-hmm. And so I really, really like that um, angle on it. So I was very excited about that, and um, and yeah. So I, I was, I was stoked that those guys actually showed up. I was stoked that Daredevil mm-hmm. showed up, and um, yeah, I, I thought worth the wait. Definitely yeah. worth the wait. And the way they did it with Ned opening up the portals, and he says, "Find Peter Parker." And then mm-hmm. when he did that, and our theater was packed, folks, and that was such a cool feeling to be yeah. in a packed theater. And and when that portal started to open you felt the anticipation of everyone in the theater when he said find peter parker and then it showed andrew garfield spider-man walking down the alley and then just applause and then he came walking through took off the mask and i had the same thought it was like they did it like mm-hmm. they they're tying these worlds together i hope they can stick the landing and they did in my mm-hmm. opinion and um and then when andrew garfield's in there and he's talking and he's trying to prove that he's spider-man and he's he's on the ceiling can you get that cobweb that was hilarious mm-hmm. and it wasn't like i had just such relief that it wasn't okay this isn't just a quick cameo and then yeah. when toby mcguire steps on the scene and i gained more appreciation for both of them um especially toby mcguire because I remember, you know, I remember back to 2002 watching that movie as a middle schooler and really enjoying it. You know, I've shared, you know, my gripes and stuff, but I was like, it took me back. I was like, man, I never knew I was nostalgic about Tobey Maguire Spider-Man until now. Mm -hmm. And then it made me feel old and grown up. And (laughs) And then he was the adult in the room when it came to the Peter Parker, you know, and uh, him in streetwear, normal clothes. (laughs) Gave us one of the funniest lines I've ever heard in a movie. Yes. Probably the best line ever spoken it in was, a movie. It was spot on. And people like Efren and I and the people we were with last night appreciated it even more. Mm-hmm. You, <laughs> when Andrew Garfield looked at, at Tobin Dwyer and said, are you going to go into a battle dressed up as a cool youth pastor? Or, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so great. And I love Thank Toby's you. response. He just, 
and shows yeah, him that he's wearing the suit. Yeah, and he's yeah, just like, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> man. I, I know. And I just, and it's just, it was, what was so great about it is you normally don't even get those kinds of comments like about anything in the church world, right? You just don't oh. get those kind of the comics in big movies or mainstream movies yeah. unless it's literally making fun of Christians. Yes. And so like, yeah. and so like in this case, it was like, they were, yeah, they were making fun of it, which is yeah. great though, because making fun of youth pastors is probably one of my favorite pastimes. Um, so like, I mean, yeah, and it was beautiful. <laughs> and the way, and like the way he delivered it, the way they response, yeah. I mean, our theater lost it. Our yes. theater lost it a lot throughout this movie, which was oh, yeah. great. That's part of the theatrical experience that you mm -hmm. miss out on. Mm -hmm. but it was just like oh man that line was so good afterwards i told these guys hey this is the best thing ever it was it was great it was it was just so great it was so cool you know and i'm not you know that's why i said at a theater that was it was one of the coolest movies i've ever seen the way they did all this and um and the banter between the peter parkers was great it was hilarious it was important you know um uh, we skipped over a really huge moment. Um, sorry, I wanted to get to the Peter Parkers too soon, but the death of Aunt May. Mm. Um, I thought that was handled very well. Um, and Marissa Tomei, I thought this was the best she's been in these movies. Mm -hmm. She's kind of been eh. But know? she had a lot more to do this time. A lot more to do. And then she delivered that last scene where she she dropped the line with great power comes great responsibility. And mm -hmm. then tying into... Um, you know, uh, all three Peter Parkers hearing that at some point in their life, um, that brought them together. I thought that was done terrifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, and that's what I was saying, like, uh, in our non-spoiler review. Um, and just for those who, if you just went, jumped into this movie, this movie, this, um, video of ours, uh, the three things I was looking for was for this version of Peter Parker to be stretched, um, mm -hmm. physically, you know, be pushed to his limits physically, pushed to his limits emotionally, and pushed to his limits intellectually. And all three of those things happen. Um, you know, pushed to his limits physically, I mean, he gets beat up in this. Like, he gets beat up. Like, one of the things I wanted, I did not want um, Andrew and Toby to show up in, like, the second act, you mm -hmm. know, and then, like, the, it's all three of them fighting throughout this whole thing. I yeah. wanted him to get his butt kicked by essentially the Sinister Six for the or Sinister Five, really. But either way, I wanted him to get his butt kicked first. I wanted him to get humbled. I wanted him, um, you know, to to try to do things, and it just didn't work out because he has been very like, again, with the whole Iron Boy thing, he kind of took on Tony Stark's like, I can take care of this all myself. Mm -hmm. And so seeing that that he tried to do that, I can take care of this myself. I can help save them, which is a normal Peter Parker Spider-Man trait. He never mm -hmm. tries to kill or put away the villains because he's always trying to let me help you because he sees the villains and he sees this happened because of this accident. Like in the comics, you know, the Vulture, for instance, mm -hmm. he's um, he's he, he has the suit. He starts stealing things because his daughter has cancer and mm -hmm. he doesn't have the money for her treatment. So that's why he's stealing money. So Spider-Man tries to work with him. You know, Sandman, same thing. He has an issue with his daughter that he's trying to do. And then like, I mean, and, and there's a couple of different iterations, but like he sees past what's happening. You know, Norman Osborn, because of his, you know, for his greed, he turns into the goblin. Like yeah. list goes on. So he sees that and he's like, I want to help them. And we yeah. and, and we hadn't seen that really too much. We saw it in the Tobey Maguire iteration, which is probably why I love those movies so much. We saw that side of Spider-Man. We didn't really see it with Andrew Garfield. We saw it with Connors a little bit mm -hmm. and a little bit in the second one. Mm -hmm. um, but we really see it here. And because of that, and he and, and like he utters this line, which which is why I felt the emotional side of it went so well of, hey, don't worry, I got this. I can do this. Mm -hmm. Like I yeah, I'll figure this out. Like he and like he even pushes away strange. You know, he mm -hmm. locks him up in the mirror dimension. He yeah. pushes, you know, he pushes these people away, but not because, just because he thinks he has it, but because he wants to make his Aunt May proud. Yeah. Which I think, so th I say all that, so leading up to that Aunt May death, it meant something. It did. It really meant something. She didn't die just for shock value. Her death meant something, and that's what pushes him over the edge mm -hmm. to where now emotionally he is completely torn up. He is broken. Mm -hmm. And he's dealing with not only the consequences of his actions and him screwing things up, but he was trying to do it for his Aunt May. He wanted to make her proud. She dies, which leads to a very good emotional scene with all three of them. Yes. Where they share their pain, which was, mm -hmm. that which was, was fantastic. That, that was, yeah, that was done. It, it was done perfectly when he says, you know, he, Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker is talking about how he lost Gwen. And Uncle Ben, and then he's talking about how he lost Uncle Ben, and both of them felt like it, it was their fault. 
So they mm-hmm. bonded over that. And then that was just, I mean, that kicked in the third act. And, and what I also appreciated about this was Tom Holland didn't take a back seat to the mm-hmm. other people in this universe. It was still his movie. And yeah. that is impressive writing, impressive that you were able to bring all this in and still let him and him, him not get outshadowed. This was his movie. This was, you know what I mean? And, and I thought that was done. I was glad that, that, that they did that, you know, and um, you know, the scene at the end where he's letting that rage get the best of him, he's just pounding, you know, green goblin and Tobey McGuire stops him, you know? Mm-hmm. And cause he's trying to remind him, remember what you're, you're trying to help. Yeah. You're trying to help. Well, he was about to kill him. <laughs> yeah. He was, trying, he was about to kill him. Yeah. And um, you know, sticking to what Aunt May was trying to get him to do, uh, despite the rage he had in him was a very powerful message. I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean that, that's the kind of stuff that, that, like I said, this is, this is what I wanted to be pushed, right? Like I wanted to see this version of Spider-Man where he's pushed. I mean, he couldn't handle them all by himself physically. He couldn't do it mm-hmm. emotionally because of the consequences of his actions and him trying to handle it on his own and realize I'm not strong enough to save everyone. You know, now you have the emotional pushing and then with the death of Aunt May, him still trying to keep his friends safe, him, you know, he wants to still help these villains. He wants to cure them. You know, he wants to help them. So because he finds out like if they go back in their universe, they die. Yeah. And so and the villains find that out, which which the villains are like, well, I'm not going back to die. Screw that. You know, so so that's where like I even appreciated the villains because they they actually had a motivation beyond I hate Spider-Man. Yep. Which, which I, that's what I was afraid of, that it was just going to be a high, I hate Spider-Man thing. And it wasn't. It was, they, yeah, they hate Spider-Man. They get locked up and they're just like, wait. And they start talking to each other and they start to figure out. And then Jamie Foxx said, it. oh, crap, I was about to die. Yeah. Dang it. And it was yeah. just like, and it was just, and they're just like, I ain't going back to die. So then not only, so now they're, what they're going through goes beyond I hate Spider-Man. It goes to, I need to survive. Mm-hmm. And if Spider-Man is in my way, I will stop him, which I was thought was way better for the villains. And then, but Green Goblin has an extra layer where he, he acted a lot like Joker-esque mm-hmm. in the sense that his, like, yeah, he didn't want to go back to die. But then above that, he wanted to corrupt Spider-Man because he yeah. kept saying things like, hey, like you, um, like what's holding you back is your sense of morality. Mm-hmm. And then this whole time Spider-Man's dealing with the line from Strange. It's like, you're trying to be Peter Parker and Spider-Man and it's going to have consequences. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to figure out how do I balance this all? And then so here's Green Goblin kicking the crap out of him saying, mm-hmm. it's your morality. That's the problem. Yeah. Which also, and then so like, then you had the death of Aunt May. And mm-hmm. then so now he's pissed. And so now he's thinking of giving up on his morality because he thinks he needs to do that to be stronger. And again, these are the things that I wanted to see that I got that I love because we're yeah. pushing him to a new direction that we hadn't seen yet. Gotcha. We just haven't. The closest we got to was the death of Gwen Stacy yeah. in Amazing Spider-Man 2. But even then, the movie just kind of fizzles out and ends and we didn't get this third movie to see it, see mm-hmm. that develop. And yeah. we got to see a lot of that happen here, which I loved. And I'm so glad you brought that up because that was one of my favorite things about this movie is Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man, Spider-Man number three, as they, they called him in the movie. <laughs> um, he got that moment, you know, mm-hmm. we, we saw him dealing with all the repercussions, all the brokenness of what happened to Gwen. And he sees him he's like, I just, I haven't, you know, and then he gets that moment where he saves MJ. She's falling just like Gwen did. Mm-hmm. And Tom Holland jumps and then he can't, he gets knocked out of the way. And, and as that happens, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, it'd be really cool if Andrew Garfield got this moment. And then and it happened. I was just like, it was, it was one of my soft moments ever. And you would, yeah, you yeah. would follow me. Cause I was literally like, Oh, that was nice. You know? <laughs> yeah. And he's sitting there. He's, he's, he's well enough. She's like, you okay. He goes, yeah, good. You know, I was, that, yeah. it was, it's, it was very well done. Very well yeah. done. And oh. uh, kudos to Andrew Garfield for getting that moment. Cause I know mm-hmm. it meant a lot to him. Yeah. Oh, listen, I a hundred percent, like when that happened, um, I know you didn't hear me, but I, I was sitting next to, you know, the two guys I was sitting next to. And I was just like, like he started tearing up and he had that moment. And I was like, let's move on. Let's move on. Because <laughs> it was about to get me. I'm like, this is yeah. too much. I like, I can't handle this. Because again, we didn't get to have get him full. We didn't get to fully realize him dealing with his emotions mm-hmm. with the death of Gwen. Like we saw it a little bit. We didn't get to see him deal with it. We saw him deal more with the death of Gwen's dad than we did yeah. Quinn. And it was yeah. just like, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what I was like, Oh, but he, and then we got to see that we got to see his yeah. hurt when he was explaining it. Like I've been hurt too, yeah. you know? And then we got to see him have that moment. And he was like, it was almost like I saved her. 
I did it, and it was yeah. a, and I was just like, oh my gosh, move on, next, like next part of the because I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's too much. As a Spider Man, I was like, this is too much. So I was with you on the soft yeah. one. I was soft it on was, that. It was it was very well done, and uh, so and I also loved how they went back. And like I said, you know me, I'm a big fan of of banter, of witty mm-hmm. banter. And the, the three Spider-Man, three Peter Parkers going back and forth and sharing war stories. You know, you guys fought an alien? I fought, you know, it was alien. You've been to space? He's like, and he's like, I'm the lame Spider-Man. I fought a, I fought a Russian guy dressed as a rhino. That was that was so great. I'm the lame Spider-Man. And then you're amazing. You're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you're amazing. It's so good. It's it very, yeah. very good. Uh, all right. So we covered all that. You know, we talked about the Peter Parkers. We talked about Aunt May. Um, let's talk about how this thing wraps up. Peter's decision, uh, Tom Holland's Peter, Peter's Peter, uh, Peter Spider-Man Parker, um, to uh, you know basically the spell had to be because the universes are breaking, and mm-hmm. the only way to fix it was everyone to forget who Peter Parker is. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, to me, I thought with with the way they introduced the great power comes great responsibility, right? And like the fact that they hadn't said it up until this point. <laughs> Up until this movie, um, I thought was, I thought was great because it was like, I, you know, we didn't want to rehash that, but they brought it in at the right time. And then with that ending, so essentially it came down to because, you know, he comes in, see, uh, Strange comes back in, right? I'm um, after being trapped. Just kind of give people a little context. He comes back in after being trapped, and he realizes, hey, look, Parker's actually doing it because Ned's like his plan's working. So he's impressed. He's like, wow, this is. Awesome. He's also impressed with Ned because Ned could use the circle thing. Um, and then, so he comes up, he's like, they're coming through because of me, right? He's like, yeah. He was like, do the spell on everyone. Like, just make it happen. And Strange explains to him the consequences of it. And he's like, this means like everyone, like nobody, nothing. Yeah. And he was just like, it has to be done. So seeing that moment of him making the ultimate sacrifice because he knows with great power comes great responsibility. So that's why like that being ushered in at that point, and then with that ending of her saying, I'm going to take responsibility for my actions and what I've done. And I'm going to have to make the ultimate sacrifice of everyone. Yeah. Not like everyone I love. Like not, not just, not just forgetting that, that he's Spider-Man, forgetting like com- him. Com- forgetting him completely. It's like he yeah. never existed. Yeah. And that was- to me, I'm like, he grew up and that's yeah. what, that's part of the reason why I love this movie so much. Yeah. It was an ultimate sacrifice. And it was his moment realizing it was him choosing to be Spider-Man, you know, realizing that that's what he had to do for, cause this movie started with him worrying about the well being of Mary Jane or MJ mm-hmm. and Ned. Yeah. The whole motivation is get them into college. They were not getting into college because of him. And it wraps up with, you know what? Not just them, but the whole universe, everybody's well being. It has to do with me. All right. Just forget me. It's not about me. Mm-hmm. And um, that took huge, you know what? And mm-hmm. um, it, the more I thought about it last night and the way it wrapped up with him, you know, getting an apartment and becoming Spider Man. And we got the comic book accurate suit, yes, your shirt, I think. Per, uh, yes, it picks very well. Yeah, it's in there um, somewhere. Yep. You know, I think it points to something very special ahead where we get, we get Spider Man. We don't get Avengers, Iron Boy. We don't get that, mm-hmm. you know, as much as I enjoyed that from time to time. We're gonna get Spider Man, and yeah. um, and from what I've seen, I, I mentioned last night he might be done, but I think he's gonna keep doing it. Tom mm-hmm. Holland, and uh, you know maybe we'll uh, get to see what he can do in just the Spider Man universe. And uh, um, so yeah, I thought it, it wrapped up really well. Um, let's go on to one of my favorite slash, I guess frustrating, but like dang it moments was the first end credit scene. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Oh man, because you knew it was coming after the post credit scene of Let There Be Carnage. Yeah. How does Tom Hardy, how does Venom wrap up in this? And I thought that, I mean, you know me, I love Tom Hardy and Venom's mm-hmm. banter. And here we go, they're at a bar. He's trying to figure out, <laughs> somebody's explaining the MCU to him. Yeah. And they teased us, man. Yeah. Yeah, man, they, they, they took us, they took us for fools, my man. Like this they was <clears throat> because of what they did. And like I said, I'm like, that's lazy. Um, because he's explaining he's, he's in the universe and he says, sounds like I need to go to New York and find this Spider-Man. And I'm just like, Oh, here we go. And then he starts and he starts, and then he just takes off. Right. And then he, uh, and so what ends up happening is he just goes back to his universe. 
So it shows us that Venom is in its own different universe that's not connected to this. Um, you know, and, 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 and he just goes back. And then and when he goes back, what ends up happening is um, it pans away. He's like, oh, he doesn't pay his tab, da, da, da. And then, but what, but what they see is that we see this little symbiote, little piece of the Venom symbiote is left behind on the counter. So what they end up doing is they end up saying like, hey, Venom popped in and now he's back in his own universe. We're going to continue doing things um, with him on our own, you know, on his own. We're going to continue that. But now there is the symbiote is now in this version of Spider-Man in this MCU. And so now they pretty much set it up to where, you know, it, as they go on to the next Spider-Man, uh, I'm assuming they'll continue this. Now we can have like a true like Venom story where the symbiote gets onto Spider-Man. I mean, you know, like this. You know, oh my gosh, I don't know how to use a freaking camera. Anyways, that one. Um, so he he, we can have symbiote Spider-Man. We can have him have this struggle. Um, hopefully, this time they don't rush it like they did with the Tobey Maguire. Hopefully, they actually do it justice and they do the symbiote. Spider-Man story properly where he's with it for a little while he has to take it off and then it goes and finds maybe this version of Eddie yeah. Brock um, there's also a, there's also different iterations in the comics uh, in the in the comics um, and in the TV shows where um, the symbiote gets on um, Harry Osborn instead mm -hmm. of Eddie Brock and then he becomes Venom I personally don't care for that I hope they don't go that way I'd rather them have like their own version of Eddie Brock because to yeah. me Venom's Eddie Brock um, but there is another version later on mm -hmm. after Venom's done all this Eddie Brock stuff and all that's kind of played out. It gets off of him and then um, he ends up getting on Flash Thompson who becomes Agent Venom, which okay. again, that storyline, I don't really care for because yeah. it's just kind of like you're just throwing yeah. Venom around for the sake of it. I prefer just an Eddie Brock. Yeah. And hopefully they'll do something like that instead. Hey, Efren, uh, not to interrupt, but I've got to actually head out. Uh -oh. uh, my voice is going, and I got to go do some parenting. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off. Uh, but check out this movie; it is great. Well, hopefully you've already checked it out. I'm I'm not. Yeah, hopefully you did. Um, but soon, I think you know well, we should do a video on the future of MCU after this movie. Mm -hmm. You know, what does Doctor Strange's movie look like? The future of Spider-Man yes. and um, what do we think? Where we think this stuff yeah. is headed? So yeah, which make sure you stay for the. Just is a mid credit and a post credit. Yes, mid credit. And uh, just yeah. watch the post credit on your own. And uh, yeah, so Gary's got to head out. I mean, we've pretty yeah. much talked about everything, anyways. Um, so Gary, we'll see you. I'll wrap us up here. We pretty much talked about everything. Um, you know, th there was just so much in this movie. We see the heart. We see we see him getting pushed to his limits. We see a new version of Spider Man emerging. And the way they end this thing, I mean, he does forget everything. So this is pretty much set it up to where basically. MCU, Sony, you know, Kevin Feige, they can kind of figure out and do whatever they want at this point. Because essentially everything Spider-Man did in the past with Avengers, Civil War, Endgame, Infinity War, all that stuff has been completely forgotten. And again, like he's never existed. So we've had this fun ride with Spider-Man. Maybe he just goes back and does stuff with Sony and that's it. Maybe they continue with the MCU. We don't really know what direction they're going. But if even if Spider-Man is completely done, at this point with the MCU, they ended it in a way to where it was satisfying and they ended to where it was like, hey, this is a great way to have this, his, Tom Holland's Spider-Man story arc come to a close. And I thought it was great. Obviously, I would love to see more now with, again, comic, more comic book accurate costume. And now he has to, like, he has his apartment. Now he's trying to build himself back up like normal Spider-Man. It's almost like he has to start over. So it kind of, that's what kind of gives me like, more hope and why I say I'm on board still because like I said, I didn't really care for their take on the Iron Boy stuff, but, but it felt like Iron Boy. I didn't really care for that, this version of Spider-Man, but now with the way this movie did things and ended it and brought in the other Spider-Man and brought these high stakes, now we can see, it's like, now we can have this version be a true Spider-Man and have him grow and have him try to do things in a different way, you know, for people who didn't care for you know, the Zendaya being MJ, maybe he finds a real MJ, maybe he finds a real Gwen. Um, you know, they can do a lot of things with it now. So the door is wide open and it's exciting. And now because of this, there are big consequences. Make sure you watch the second. I know we spoiled the crap out of this. I The second end credit, so that's the mid credit. Second end credit is basically a trailer for Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Check that out because, and, and I see why they did it because 
if they showed the trailer, it would have spoiled the crap out of this movie. Um, so not the crap out, but it would have spoiled some out of this movie. So I see why that was the second end credit. Make sure you stay for that. And it, it was, it, it, so it was fun. Um, I'm actually going to go again tomorrow on Saturday. I'm actually going to see it with, you know, take the wife and things like that. So it's going to, and I get to have a kind of another version of this. So, um, so yes, yeah, so this is our spoiler review. It was great. It was fun. Uh, if you want to see our actual rankings, check out our non-spoiler review where we actually rank this movie. This was just us wanting to talk about it more in depth on why we like it because we didn't get to say too much in the other video. So hopefully you're able to see that as well. And so yeah, a lot of fun. Make sure, I mean, I'm glad you watched it. Go see it again. Support it. Show the MCU, hey, this is the kind of stuff we like to see. And um, so you guys can, uh, so we can get more of this awesomeness. Like, don't be afraid of the multiverse. Don't be afraid to bring, to have new and fresh ideas. Keep it coming. We loved it. So we will check you guys out next time. Make sure to subscribe. If you haven't yet, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos that we are doing. And make sure you hit the like button. So please the YouTube God so you can keep getting the videos and the stuff pops up. So we will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for being on this journey with Gary and I as we decide to continue to talk about movies and things that we love. And thanks for joining your Real Pastors. We will catch you guys next time. See you.